Swamiji, you were discussing karma earlier, and I wondered if you could explain about group karma, family karma. Any kind of action re results in a, a reaction. So when you do things for a group, for example, anything that a country does, um, Hitler, for example, who condemned six million Jews to the gas chamber, he doesn't have to bear all that karma himself. It's his, he did it on behalf of his country. All of Germany has to bear that karma. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed going to Germany that uh, there's a certain black cloud over that country. They have a karma they have to pay off. And uh, even people who never would have done such a thing, which most people would not, in fact, going through Germany in 19... Uh, 38, I noticed there were many very kind people that would help us and so on, but the country as a whole has to bear that karma, and as long as you bear, live in that country, you have to be a part of that karma. So it will. there are group karmas as well as individual karmas. That which is done by a group on behalf of the group is something the whole the whole group has to bear. There is individual karma, there's family karma, there's nation or neighborhood, neighborhood karma, nation karma, mm -hmm. global karma. Mm -hmm. And uh, some things this whole planet is responsible for. For example, this planet has become, all to, the people on this planet have become altogether too greedy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not greedy, but I will have to bear the karma of the greed in this planet. And so when the, when the world goes through a great depression, which it will, and quite soon I feel, it, my guru said it would be much worse than 1930s. Mm -hmm. It's due to people's greed. And I will have to suffer for that too. I will come through it because I'm not greedy. Mm -hmm. But I will have to be aware of it and it'll have some effect on me. So group karma will be there. Global karma is something else. It's uh, um, not just, I mean, look at the wars that have been fought here, the atomic wars and so on that are likely to come. There is something like 35,000 known atomic weapons in the world. If one person drops one, I don't think everybody will say, well, stop that. Human nature being what it is, there'll be retaliation. Yogananda said the, you, no place will be safe from such bombs. And uh, what will that do? That's the whole globe that's going to have to bear that karma. I know that one time in a lecture in Hollywood Church, Yogananda stopped his lecture and just, he'd been talking about the future anyway. But he said, you don't know what a terrible cataclysm is coming. And cataclysm usually means something more than man-made. Mm. What would it mean? I know many people have talked of three days of darkness. Mm. Saints have described it. I don't know, but I assume it will be true. Um, will it be a comet hitting this earth? Will it stop the earth in it from its spinning for three days until the inner motion? I don't know. But you ask the question, and that's the answer. Is there any way to alleviate such an eventuality? Well, we can alleviate it for ourselves. We can alleviate it for our neighborhood. We can make it better by being kind to people, but we can't offset the karma of two and something, six billion people. Mm. That, but but in, the, in the case of Germany, um, that's a heavy karma to bear for all that yes. death and suffering that they caused. How would they... Uh, uh, eliminate that karma or offset that? I think that they will have to go through it. You, When you've gone through a karma, you've paid it off. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to go through that again. Mm -hmm. It's not as if anybody is, net, is innately evil. We're all children of God. But when we do evil, we have to have evil results. So what would happen to Germany? Well, I suspect it will be a war. Mm -hmm. I don't know but a war with Russia maybe. Yogananda said that Russia would be annihilated. Hmm. 
That's because of the terrible things that they have done. Russia and China together have killed over a hundred million of their own people. Mm -hmm. That's bad karma. And so they'll have to learn that lesson. Mm -hmm. India, on the other hand, has good karma. America has good karma, basically because it's not old enough to have accumulated much bad karma. <laughs> but uh, America has good karma. Uh, Europe has pretty bad karma. My guru said that Europe will be devastated. Mm -hmm. And the Near East with the terrorism and so on, I think that they're only sowing the seeds now for their future destruction. Mm -hmm. I, I've read reports of people who have under hypnosis gone into the future. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but the Near East and so on is uninhabited for a long time mm -hmm. because of atomic energy mm -hmm. from warfare. So in such a turbulent time, the only bomb shelter is the spine? Yes, the only bomb shelter is within. And so meditation, obviously, is the the best defense. You know, there, yes, and thinking of God, there's a very interesting statistic. In, when, the, when America, and this is its gar, bad karma, it dropped those bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There were two spiritual communities in those towns, fairly near the epicenter of that bomb. In Nagasaki, um, well, I don't know which was which, but in one of them it was a Franciscan community, and the other one it was a Jesuit community. But they were untouched. Mm. And so it's an amazing thing. But uh, if you have faith in God and love God, He will protect you. On a smaller scale, when we're trying to uh, go in a direction that's different from our family karma, for example, how can we... Uh, make our own way against a strong karma? We have to stand on our own feet. We must learn to be more God-centered. You know, in Tibet, they've tried to make it a point, well, back when it was Tibet, of sending at least one son to a monastery. It's very good karma for a family to have at least one child devoted to God. It is said also that when you achieve liberation, no moksha, seven generations of your family, backwards and forwards, future as well as past, will be freed. How freed? I don't know. Obviously, you're not freed to the same degree, but to some degree, they will be freed. Mm -hmm. So anything that you do can bring good karma to your whole family. I was wondering, Swamiji, do animals have karma? Animals don't have karma because there's no ego there. They have sort of a mass karma. That's what Master described it as. So um, whole groups of animals, if they behave in a certain way, may finally get it. But no, it's, it's the ego that acts as the magnet that draws that, keeps that karma focused to the post of your own self. When you've overcome that ego, it's as if a, sa a safe is to fall from a building and squash you flat, and you're not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so freedom from karma means what exactly? Freedom from karma means that you're no longer affected by what happens to you. So, but in, in the case of a master like Yogananda, it's not as if he... Things happened to him, but they weren't... I'm not quite sure how to ask the question. He takes the karma of other people. He takes the karma of his family, of his country, above, above all of his disciples. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't take his own karma because he has none. Mm -hmm. So the things that happen to a master... Involved. He's usually, he's taking the karma of his disciples. In other words, if you're a very strong man and some big bully comes to beat your child and you stand in the way and he hits you, it isn't going to hit you, it might kill your child. Yeah. 
And so a great saint can stand in the way and absorb that blow and save you from what would be very devastating to you or to the, uh, to the person you're defending. Is it possible for lesser beings who are not <clears throat> avatars to also help and share karma with others? I have read that it's not, but on the other hand, I read a very interesting story, and I don't know how to make it, what to make of it. But a man, he was an old man, and his son was going to be a ruler, but his son was, had a crippling disease. And the father asked to be given that disease. And the father died of that disease, but the son was cured. Mm -hmm. So this was, as far as I know, not an enlightened being. And yet he was able to do that. So I suppose there are ramifications to that law. But is that a good idea? For... I don't see what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. He did it for other people. Mm -hmm. You can't get bad karma if you're helping people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Swamiji, karma and magnetism, are they related? The magnetism, they're related in this way, that whatever magnetism is, is of many different types, and you can have a particular magnetism of love, for example, or hatred too is magnetic. People, uh, if you hate people, you attract. Sometimes people are born into one family who are enemies, hmm. But the magnetism of their, their hatred uh, drew them together so they could fight it out at close quarters. Mm -hmm. Karma is magnetic in that sense that, that uh, the energy that you put out comes back to you. And it's, it's all tied together. The basic reality of matter is energy. And magnetism is a part of that energy. In your work, if you put out good, strong energy, you can create the magnetism to attract success. But success depends upon magnetism. Failure depends upon magnetism, too. And some people have failure magnetism. They just think, oh, I'll never work, it'll never do for me, I'll never succeed, and they don't succeed. But somebody who's even uneducated, if he has lots of positive energy, he does succeed. So, from our present standpoint, the karma you've generated, you can't change. But you can change your present karma and your present magnetism. So, put out kind vibrations, they will come back to you. <laughs>